Okay, so uh, we are talking about the case of reverse arbitrage. In the case of reverse arbitrage, as you can see, f naught is less than s naught exponential r t, which is the theoretical forward price. Now, because s naught is s naught exponential r t is greater, therefore, what will happen? We sell it in the spot market and buy and replenish the asset in the forward market. Basically, this is the philosophy of reverse arbitrage. In other words, the important thing is that during the period from t equal to 0 to capital T, you are dispossessed of the possession of the asset. In the case of investment assets, this does not really does not matter too much to the investor. He is concerned with the returns from the investment, investment not from the physical possession of the asset. However, when you are holding an asset for consumption, the situation is different. When you are holding an asset for consumption, the objective is that you are going to use it for some purpose or the other, which is aligned to either your personal use or for the purpose of your business. Uh, that being the case, that being the case, the physical separation from a consumption asset becomes more significant than in the case of investment assets. As a, as a result of which, the process of reverse arbitrage, which can operate without any inhibition, without any impediment in the case of investment assets, may not so operate in the case of consumption assets. People may not be willing to pa uh, part with the physical possession of such assets, because they want to use it during the period of the forward contract. And Parting from uh, parting with these assets will def, uh, will obviously influence or be detrimental to their regular business operations. That could be the case. As a result of which, this reverse arbitrage phenomenon may not occur in many instances. Now, that being the case, when reverse arbitrage is not likely to occur, that means what? It follows that this inequality. You see. By the operation of reverse arbitrage, this inequality is killed. This inequality is replaced by the equality because reverse arbitrage takes place. Now, if reverse arbitrage is not going to take place, that means what? That means this inequality can sustain in the case of consumption assets because there is no arbitrage to, to eliminate the inequality in and converted to the equality. So, that is the difference between the pricing of forward contracts on investment assets and forward contracts on consumption assets. And that is what gives rise to the concept of convenience yield, which we take up now. Now, as I mentioned earlier, F naught is equal, to F naught is less than S naught exponential r t. Now, if s naught is f naught is less than s naught exponential r t, uh, that means what? That means, I can put another factor here and write it as f naught is equal to s naught exponential r minus y t. The right hand side is larger than the left hand side. So, I can rescale the right hand side by putting the factor e to the power y t um, e to the power minus y t which is obviously less than 1. So, I can rescale it by the factor e to the power minus y t to the extent that it becomes equal to f naught. So, this y is what is called the convenience yield. What is the significance of this? The significance of this arises from the first inequality that f naught is less than this. In other words, the forward market price is less than what it should have been. If people were willing to part with the assets just like investment assets. But because people are not willing to part with these assets, we have this factor of y coming into play. But why are people not willing to part with these assets? Because they feel more comfortable they feel more convinced that by retaining physical possession of their as these assets. So, this factor y is a measure of how much comfort level increase the 
market players feel or the people who are going to engage in arbitrage feel by retaining physical possession of the assets. Obviously, it would depend on the demand and supply of the underlying asset. If it is believed that the underlying asset could go uh, could be scarcely available at a later point in time, the convenience yield could be very high and people would like to retain it in stock. The storage levels could also determine the, the convenience yield for a particular in market player. So, but the basic thing is the convenience yield gives a measure of why you want to retain physical possession of the asset. The preference, the desire, the temptation to retain physical possession of the asset rather than part with it and derive arbitrage profit therefrom. This is a numerical example on convenience yield. The current price of wheat is rupees 12,000 per quintal. Storage costs work out to rupees 150 per quintal payable quarterly in advance. Maybe go down rent for example. Calculate the convenience yield in percentage per annum if the forward price per quintal, this is the actual forward price which is 1425 for a forward contract of maturity one year, the risk free rate is 10 percent. Let us see how it is worked out. The spot price of wheat is 1200, the risk free rate is 10 percent. The tenure is one year and the storage costs are 150 per year. The first step is that we work out the present value of the storage costs. The present value of the storage costs using an interest rate of 10 percent continuous compounding comes out to 144.536. Please note uh, the, the rent or the, or the storage costs are paid quarterly in advance. So, each quarter you are paying this much, but you are paying at the beginning of the quarter. So, the present value is worked out accordingly and it comes to 144.536. Now, thereafter ignoring convenience yield, we work out the factor S naught plus U naught. This is my U naught. This is U naught. So, S naught plus U naught e to the power R t. This is let us say F 0, this is my theoretical futures price in the absence of any convenience yield and that comes to 1485.94, this is equal to F 0. The actual futures price comes out to 1425, let us call it F 0 star. In other words, this is the, the price, of the forward price is lower. Why is it lower? Because people do not want to part with that. In other words, this includes the convenience yield. This includes the convenience yield factor y and on simplification, we get y is equal to 4.19 percent. So, in other words, the factor y of 4.19 percent is indicative of the desire, the temptation, the intention, the motivation of the of the market player to retain physical possession of the asset and thereby because you want to keep the asset, people want to retain the physical possession of the asset, the forward price goes down. The forward market uh, demand for the asset in the forward market reduces. People do not want to part with it and buy it in the forward market. They want to buy it in the spot market. That is, that is the reason that the pricing of forward contract is segregated in terms of investment assets and in terms of consumption assets. Now, we come to a very interesting problem, valuing a forward after inception. As we discussed earlier, the value of a forward contract at the point of inception is invariably 0 because the contract is entered into at F 0, which is the forward price and the forward price is defined by the fact that the price that makes the value of the forward contract at the date of inception equal to 0. That is the forward price on that date, on that point at that instant. But as time passes, the perception of people about the price of the asset on the date of maturity of the forward contract changes. And as a result of it, the forward price also changes. And because the forward price changes, the forward contract acquires a value. Because the forward price changes, the forward contract acquires a value. We want to determine the value of that forward contract. Let us see it on a diagram. This is a timeline. 
we start at let us say we start at 1st january which is t0 and the price of let us say it's a it's a uh, it's a us dollar let us say it's a us dollar and the price of a us dollar at 1st january is 75 rupees this is what this f0 signifies f0 equal to 75 means if i want to buy us dollars fixing the price today for delivery at december 31st i will get it for 75 rupees in other words i will pay 75 rupees on 31st december i'll get 1 dollar the agreement is here there will be no change in the price whatever happens in between i will i will get a dollar for 75 rupees at 31st of december no time passes and perception change we are living in a dynamic market dynamic environment on 1st april i find that if now i want to buy a us dollar with delivery on 31st december not one year delivery on 31st december say the the delivery date is fixed the period is not the period is one year it has come down to 9 months the date remains 31st december so if i were to enter into a forward contract as on 1st april for delivery of the dollar on 31st december i will have to pay 90 rupees per dollar in other words at in on 1st january if i wanted uh, dollars on 31st december i got it for 75 rupees now if i want a do, uh, dollar on 31st december the 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 predetermined price or the price that is fixed as on april 1 is 90 rupees per dollar of course and the question is what is the value of obviously how do the two contracts differ the two contracts differ in the context of the cash flow that is going to occur on the date of maturity that is 31st december suppose i take a long position in this the january contract that is i buy a dollar uh, under the con forward contract on that and i take a short position in this in other words i deliver a dollar under the second contract then what do i get i receive the dollar under the first contract under the contract a let's call it contract a i receive a dollar under contract a and i deliver the dollar under contract b what happens to the rupee side so the dollar side is annulled i receive a dollar under contract a and i deliver a dollar under contract b Do uh, dollar side is cancelled annulled as far as rupees are concerned when i re receive the dollar i pay 75 rupees 31st december and when i deliver the dollar i receive 90 rupees in other words i make a profit of 15 rupees but that profit occurs on 31st december so what would be the value of the strategy going long in this and going short in this the value of the strategy as on 31st december is 15 rupees so what is the value of the strategy at this point the value of the strategy at this point is the present value of 15 rupees and what is this 15 rupees 15 value 15 rupees is the value of the forward price at 1st april minus value of the forward price as on 1st january present value present value at what point present value at t star that is 1st april present value at 1st april of 15 rupees which is which is nothing but the difference in the prices difference in the forward prices as on these two dates in other words the value of this the value of the strategy what is the strategy long in this short in this long in this short in this so va minus vb is equal to present value of this but vb is what vb is the value of the forward contract on the date of inception which by definition is zero so vb is zero vb is zero why because we are doing the valuation on the very date of inception of contract b and by definition we assume that the value of a forward contract on the date of inception is zero so vb is zero in uh, value of the portfolio is equal to va minus vb so vb being zero va is equal to present value of 15 which is equal to this so in other words 
the value of this contract value of this contract A which was entered into on 1st January value of contract A entered into on 1st January is equal to the present value of the difference in the forward prices. Value of the contract this T star is 1st first, uh, first April. So, value of the contract which was entered into on 1st January as on 1st April as on 1st April is equal to the difference in the forward prices and the present value of that present value on what date present value on the date of valuation which is 1st April. So, that is equal to when you simplify this you get the today's spot price that is 1st April spot price minus the present value of the original forward price present value of the original forward price present value at what point present value at T star which is 1st April which can be further simplified to this expression. Why? Because F 0 T is nothing but F 0 T is nothing but S 0 e to the power R T. So, if you put this here you get this expression. This is an example on 1st January 2018 the spot price of wheat was rupees 1200 per quintal x took a long position in a forward contract with maturity of 9 months that means the delivery is 30th of September. The risk free rate was 24 percent with continuous compounding. However, on April 1 the spot price of wheat for the same quantity has increased to 14 percent per quintal while the risk free rate remains unchanged that is 24 percent calculate the value of the original contract this contract first January contract as on first April. So, these are the two prices this is the future value of the January price future value of this quantity which is this and the current price is this. So, future current price this is S T star and this is S naught e to the power R T star and, and this expression this this is S naught this is S naught. So, S T star minus the future value of this S naught e to the power R T star gives you this value as the value of the contract as on April 1 this formula this formula S T star minus S naught e to the power R T star R T star is the interval between the original contract and the date of valuation. This is a slightly more involved question on 1st April 2018 a stock was expected to pay a dividend of 2010 2 rupees 10 paisa per share in 2 months and in 5 months the stock price as on date was 50 rupees and the risk free rate was 24 percent with continuous compounding and we still had taken a short position in a 6 month forward contract on this date 3 months later that is on 1st July 2018 the price of the stock was 44 and the risk free rate was still 24. Calculate the value of the original contract April 1 contract as on July 1. So, this is the first step this step we had done earlier in the context of a previous problem and we arrive at the forward price at t equal to 6 this was when this was the value of the contract at 1st at April 2018 this was the forward price forward price at 1st April 1st April 2018 this was the forward price 1st April 2018. Now, we come to the second part of this problem now second part is for what does he say he says that 3 months later that is 1st July stock price has gone down to 44, but the important thing is when you are talking about 1st July one dividend payment has already taken place. So, we are left with only the second dividend payment 1st April 2 months means 1st first, first of June. So, this, this dividend payment has already taken place and this dividend payment is pending. 
So, this dividend payment will be accounted for when we work out the forward price in the second case, in the case of this second contract that is this contract July 2018 contract. So, let us see. Now, we have got only one dividend payment this one, this is the only dividend payment and this is occurring at 2 months from now the, the you see the total period was 6 months, there was a dividend period at the end of 2 months, there was a dividend period at the end of 5 months and we are now at 3 months. So, the remaining period is 2 months, this is 2 months. So, the discounting is uh, uh, done for 2 months, the dividend is 2.10. So, the discounted value of dividend comes to this much, the current stock price has gone down, the current stock price has gone down from 50 to 44. For 50 to 44, this is the present value of dividend payment. So, the net, net stock price is 41.98, that is 44 minus 2.0177, this is the present value of dividend, this is D0, this is, uh, this is S0. So, S0 minus D0 is this, and then therefore, the forward price. Now, how much uh, period is remaining? We are having just the one month now. So, the forward price at t equal to 6 comes to 44.5784. So, what is the difference between the two prices? What was the earlier price? The earlier price was 51.9575, 51.9575, this was the original price, uh, original price that was on 1st April this is the new price of the remaining contract. So, this is the difference and the value of this contract is the present value of the difference. So, this is discounted for 3 months and this is the S naught minus D naught, this is D naught, this is S naught minus D naught, forward price at T equal to this is for 3 months, forward price 54 for this into future value of 41.98 for 3 months. This is this much, this was the original value. So, this is the difference in forward prices, difference in forward prices and finally, this is the present value of the differences which is the value of the contract. Now, a topic which is slightly digressive, but which is very much relevant is the concept of spot and forward interest rates. All of us are familiar with spot rates. Spot rates are rates which are available in the market for deposits made as of today. Deposits made as of today. Technically speaking, technically speaking, spot rates, if I define a spot rate for one year, let us say for example, spot rate is the rate which is given by, suppose I have a zero coupon bond, zero coupon bond is a bond that has a maturity of a, say 100 rupees and is quoted at a discount and does not pay any coupons during the life of the bond, that is a zero coupon bond. The only cash flow occurs on the maturity of the bond which is equal to its face value and it is obviously traded at a discount that the difference between the price and the redemption value which is the face value constitutes the, the difference between the price and the redemption constitutes the return for the investor. So, if today's price of a say one year bond P0 comma for a one year bond is equal to then it can be written as f upon 1 plus s 0 1, where s 0 1 is the spot rate embedded in this price. Usually, these spot rates are given at semi annual intervals, in other words for 6 month maturities, 6 months, 1 year, 1 and a half year, 2 years and so on. Similarly, for 2 years we will have for 0 coupon bonds, obviously this s 0 1 and s 0 2 coincide with the respective YTMs. The yield to maturities and the spot rates coincide. In other words, we can define, we can define the spot rates 
we can define the spot rates as the YTMs on loans that pay only one cash flow on the maturity of the instrument and are quoted at a discount. There is no coupon payment during the life of the instrument. That these are spot rates. These are rates which are available when you make a deposit as of today for a loan extending to the future. Compare this with the forward rate concept. The forward rate concept is a concept which relates which is similar to a forward contract in fact. What is a forward contract? A forward contract is a contract which is entered into at t equal to 0 and gives delivery at t equal to capital T. Similarly, a forward rate is a rate which is agreed upon at this point agreed at t equal to 0, but relates to a loan that begins at t equal to capital T and then may extend into a future period. That is called a that is called a forward rate. A rate that pertains to a loan transaction occurring in the future, but the rate is negotiated, is finalized as of today. So it is obviously a forward contract. But in this case, the underlying instrument is not a commodity. It is not a share. It is not stock. It is an interest rate, and that interest rate will cover you a particular period of time from t equal to t to let us say t equal to n and this is called a forward rate. We can again invoke the principle of no arbitrage for determining a relationship between the spot rate and the and the forward rate. For example, suppose I decide to have a loan of let us say for simplicity 0 and 3 years. I decide an investment uh, uh, for a period of 3 years. I decide to make an investment for a period of 3 years. Now, there can be different ways of doing it. I can start uh, uh, and uh, make a, uh, in one time investment uh, or an investment in one go of uh, at a spot rate of 3 years, in which case the amount that I will get on maturity uh, will be equal to A will be equal to P or P 0 into 1 plus S 0 3 to the power 3. And there can also be an approach, there can also be an approach where I invest for 1 year and then here on I invest again for the next 2 years or I invest at 1 year intervals. In that case, what is the amount that I will get? In that case, I will get A is equal to and let us call this A star 1 plus S 0 1 into this rate. No, now, the important thing is we want to keep the risk level out of the analysis. Risk level out of the analysis means what? Means that these rates also have to be fixed at this point. There is no scope for market oriented rates at this point and at this point. These rates also should be known upfront just like the spot rate at this point. We know the spot rate for a one time investment of 3 years that is obviously known to us. Therefore, if we want to take the risk level uh, risk out of the equation out of the arbitration process, then we must assume that the rates here available here and the rate available here are also uh, available at this point and which are nothing but the forward rates. So, we must have 1 plus F 1 2 now, obviously, as I mentioned just now, because the risk in both the both the situations where you are investing like this or you are investing piecemeal, the risk has been kept out of the equation by using forward rates, rates and therefore, if uh, the arbitration philosophy can be invoked. And if you invoke the arbitration philosophy, what you get is that A and A star must coincide. Whether you go through this approach or you go through this piecemeal approach, because the risk level is unchanged, they must give you the same result. And which means, which implies that 1 plus S 0 1 into 1 plus F 1 2 into 1 plus F 1 3 uh, 2 3 is equal to 1 plus S 0 3 whole cube. 
So, this obviously can be extended to any number of years. Uh, this is the uh, version uh, extended version, the general version 1 plus s 0 t to the power t for a t th year loan can be written as 1 plus s 0 1 plus f 1 2 plus 1 plus f t minus 1 and 2, which can be further expressed as this this term uh, 1 plus s 0 2 into 1 plus s 2 3 to up to 1 plus f t minus 1 2 t. Now, there is a very interesting proposition which is related to which is related to the concept of forward rates. Now, if the actual rates evolve according to the forward rate curve, we have a forward rate curve depicting uh, as of today what are the forward rates projecting for different maturities for a maturity of 1 year, maturity of 2 years and so on. We have different rates which are projected in a graphical manner which is called the forward rate curve. If the actual rates evolve according to the forward rate curve, then it does not make any diff your pattern of investment does not make any difference. In other words, if you buy long term bonds that is you invest today for maturity uh, over a long period of time uh, over the desired period of time let us say t years, then you buy uh, you make an investment in one go in a in a bond of maturity t or you make investments at the end of every year or every half year uh, at the at the at the uh, relevant rates which which is which are assumed to follow the forward rate curve in that situation the investor is equally well off in both the alternatives the proof is quite simple and let us look at it now if you invest in one bond uh, at on a rolling basis uh, on a rolling basis if you invest p0 amount then what you get is p0 into 1 plus f01 this is reinvested again uh, into 1 plus f12 into 1 plus up to f this is if you are investing on a rolling basis now the other situation is that you make an investment one time but the coupons are reinvested at the relevant forward rates. So, in that case what happens the first the coupon that you receive at the end of the first year will be reinvested for t minus 1 years at the respective forward rates f 1 2 f 2 3 and so on f t minus 1 into t. The coupon that you receive at the end of the second year will be reinvested at f 2 3 and then 3 4 3 4 f t minus 20 and so on the final coupon will obviously, not be reinvested. Uh, simplifying this expression if I take this expression outside the brackets we have this expression within brackets and and this expression is nothing but 1 plus s 0 1 this expression if you recall 1 plus f 0 1 into 1 plus f 1 2 is nothing but 1 plus s 0 2 whole square and similarly this expression is nothing but 1 plus s 0 t to the power t. So, the entire thing this entire thing is nothing but p naught. So, we have this here and this whole thing is nothing but p naught therefore, this this is 1 and this is 2 and they are coinciding. Thank you.